Jedi Jack Penguin, and today I'm bringing you another LEGO Star Wars review. So today I'm going to look at set number 7752, Count Dooku's Solar Sailor. This set includes 385 pieces and originally retailed for $54.99 in the US back in February of 2009. First thing I want to start off with is that the price per piece, which I didn't know before recording this intro bit, is just horrible, at least in my opinion. It's definitely on the standards of today's pricing, which is not at all good, at least in my opinion. Also, one thing that I did want to note is that after building this, I don't really care for this model anymore. I remember this back in the day being an interesting set, but I, 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 it, I, we'll see what happens during this review. I don't really care for the model anymore, but I did get this back in the day when it came out at that price I expect, or maybe at a different price I might have gotten this on clearance. I have no idea because I do actually own two or three of this set, which I think is a little crazy. It's just somewhere mixed in with all my other parts. I no longer own the original box for the set, so you won't see that, or the extra pieces, but I do have the original instructions right in front of us so we can take a quick look at that. Very front pretty much mimics the box with the Lego and Star Wars logo. You get the clone face all the way at the top right there. This is based off Star Wars The Clone Wars, which is another reason why it's an interesting set. I do remember seeing this within The Clone Wars, even I did just rewatch it. I think that this is a very interesting take on the model. I would have liked to see Lego take another go at it though, because it is a little weird and some of the building techniques used in it I think are interesting as well, but I don't really like the overall look and outcome of this model. But getting right into the instructions, we can flip all the way to the back. We have the old win information for 2009 showing off some older sets right here from that time period. I actually saw this recently for $17 at one of my local thrift stores. You might have seen that in my vlog. But we have a quick LEGO Club advertisement, and then we have some advertisements for some of the other sets that released around this time. Out of these sets, I do own all of the sets that are shown on this page right here. I do hope to review most of these over the course of the next couple of weeks and months and whatever, and maybe even next year. Of course, I no longer own the original boxes for any of these, probably the only box that I still actually have is probably for that battle pack, the clone battle pack. Those are some amazing sets right there, though these I don't really care for the characters in them. Definitely wish that they'd give us another clone battle pack like that in the future, it's something that we really need. As for these other sets, they're pretty interesting, especially the Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. I actually remember owning that. I probably should rebuild that very soon. That's a very interesting set. This set you're very likely to see a review for very soon, other than the fact that I am missing some stickers on these lower parts. The minifigures I still have in my collection. And then this set I am working on rebuilding currently, so you guys can look forward to that maybe sometime in the near future. I don't know if I'll get to that right away though. And then we have another advertisement page right here, just a full color illustration with all of our sets from this wave just interacting with each other, a bunch of them right there. I really like how that looks and you get Captain Rex right there in the corner. We have the play features big on this page right there. Sorry if some of this gets caught off. It's a big instruction booklet. And then we have the piece count for two pages right there. Nothing really too special going on for the piece count. I use that to bring us back the model. And then that does bring you to the final overall model for this set. So that's all for the instructions. So let's take a look at our minifigures. Taking a look at our first minifigure, here is Count Dooku. He is not exclusive to the set, he also comes within the 2012 Malevolent set, as well as a magnet set from 2009 and the San Diego Comic Con exclusive character display set. We get some plain black legs and some plain black arms, light flesh hands for the flesh tone. We only get printing for the front of the torso, I do really like the attention to detail using the chain right there that connects his cape and then his belt going on. We don't get any back printing right there. Just gonna show it anyways there's a look at that get the same old cape style right there not the felt type the older type in plain brown right there we also do get his accessory which is probably the most interesting accessory to come with a lego star wars minifigure which he did get his own exclusive mold for his lightsaber and it is still inside that chrome color right there compared to all the other lightsabers from this era it is the only one to retain the chrome signify right there for the lightsaber i do really like that 
hopefully we do get to see that in the future since we haven't seen Count Dooku, I believe since around 2012-2013, last time I remember. But it should be interesting the next time that we see him if he does have the chrome lightsaber hilt or if he gets the same piece just remolded into, into the most recent color. He also does get his lightsaber in red since he is a Sith. We get his facial expression, which pretty much mimics his facial expression from the Clone Wars pretty well. He gets a very large frown going on right there and those cartoony eyes from the Clone Wars. We get his hairpiece, which is also the, his Clone Wars hairpiece. I think that that hairpiece definitely fits his character. That's the Joker hairpiece inside like gray. So also before I forget, we do get another accessory for your Count Dooku minifigure. We get one of these brown hoods, which I think also fits his character pretty well with the cape. Definitely makes him look very menacing with that frown right there. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I got to say for our minifigure of Count Dooku. The next minifigure within the set is this pilot droid right here. We just get the name pilot droid for this character. Sort, sort of similar build as a battle droid using those battle droid legs in plain white, battle droid arms, the curved ones in white, and also the battle droid body in white. Also for the head, I think it's very interesting that they decided to go with this skeleton leg as the head. I think that fits the character very interestingly, though I would have liked to maybe see some printing, but I don't know how that would have worked out. We also do get the stud on the very front of the battle droid body instead of on the back. So I think that's just a very interesting character to get. It's just a weird character. That's really all that I gotta say for him. The next two minifigures within the set are the Magna Guards, which these minifigures also come within the Magna Guard Starfighter, also released the previous year within 2008. These are the only times that we've ever gotten these characters. Hopefully LEGO does update them sometime in the future. It's just another character that we haven't really seen in a while since this set and then the other set in 2008. They both have the same exact design used for their characters using these Super Battle Droid legs and also this body piece which was also used within that 2010 General Grievous set that I just recently reviewed. We get these older type Exo Force arms right there and also the serving hand piece for the hands which connect the clip piece to their accessory being this stick piece with two of these cone pieces in trans purple on each end for their weapon. We also do get a red stud right there for the front of their body. We get these specialized capes for the characters which I think I think it's very nice that they did give them their own capes as well as their own head molds right there and you can see how that works if I do take off this one's head. It's just attached sort of like a stick right there and then you place it on like that. Of course since these characters use these battle droid type body pieces they do move like the battle droid characters right there at the legs and also on the arms you can move their arms back and forth and also move their hands which I think is a very nice add of articulation. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I gotta say for the Magna Guards. Looking at the overall build for Count Dooku's Solar Sailor, I think that this set is just a very weird and odd concept, and also I, I really like that they did even make this vehicle. It's one of the vehicles from the Clone Wars that I think they should have probably made another one of because they did use it not only within the Clone Wars movie, but they also used it within the series quite a bit. You can see it even in like season five, I think, when Count Dooku goes to Dathomir, which I think is very interesting. The styling of it, I think, is very interesting. I like all of the different building techniques, having you build on both sides of this ship and just like showing all of these different details. We do use a lot of stickers on the set. You can see right away from the very top, we do use these circular stickers. I didn't reapply these since I feel like those are gonna peel pretty easily since of due to the age of this set. You can also see that we use the same stickers on the very bottom right here. We use some stickers on these other types of slope pieces right here on both sides, just reversed. You can see how that works. And then we get another set of those stickers over here. And then inside the ship, we do get some other accessories with some stickers, which I'll show in a little bit. But here's an overall look just at the main base of the ship. I really like how it looks like just on display like this. I think it's very interesting from the side. From the front, I don't really, I don't really like how that looks. And I, I, it's just a very weird, weird ship. And I don't know why I don't like it and why I like it at the same time. It's sort of like a weird, confused feeling. And some of these pieces do break off quite easily or like move quite easily since they are attached using some hinge pieces and different types of clip pieces and whatnot. Moving the two pieces down here, you can move those up and down if you want. So then you can have your ship 
stable like that. It works pretty nice and easily to keep it from moving where it is. We can move in here to get into the cockpit. You can move that down and then you can take this piece out. Which, taking that piece out, here is the main controls for the ship. Nothing really too special going on there. No printed pieces, no stickered pieces, just this weird, odd build. Right here, you can place your droid pilot character. You can place their hands onto that clip piece. And then you can place their legs down here. And then you can just have the character fold their head down, you know, just, <laughs> it looks so bad, it looks so sad right there. And then you can place this back into the ship, like such. It actually fits in pretty nicely, you know, that's the one thing that I do like. And then when you do close it up, it does look like the character is poking out of there, having that skeleton leg down like that, but never mind. We get some flick missiles on both sides right here, which we also do get the play feature with this little part which when you click that down, you can fire these like that. And then those go out into the distance. That's probably the best use of this function since those actually fire out quite rapidly using that play feature. That is one thing that I do like about this set. And then you can just place those right back where they are. You just place them in like that. And then they have them also on the other side of the ship. You can see them over here. And then that is the same sort of use using this. You just push that down and then it releases those flick missiles. Moving to the very front of the ship, you can see that we get some more clip pieces, these different types of hinge pieces over here that you can unfold and then you can reveal Count Dooku Speeder, which is probably one of the worst builds within the set, which I remember building this when I was building the set just recently, just looking looking at this thing, it just looks so bad, at least in my opinion. I would have liked to see maybe some clear stuff down here to make it look like it's levitating. Just the bottom of this thing just looks so it, do it doesn't look the way that it should. I do like, however, that we do get some stickers, though those should be peeling a little bit more right there. I like that we get a seat on here, and that's something very nice. But you can place your minifigure of Count Dooku into his speeder if you so desire. You can place his legs into the seat and curve his hands onto the little steering area, making sure that his cape goes flying back behind him. We also do get some clip pieces on the very side of this where you can place his lightsaber, which the one thing that I don't like about that is that it shows that you can put his lightsaber there, though you really can't put its handle there. You have to put the blade there, which doesn't really make sense when you're having your blade of your lightsaber holding onto the clip piece. That's the one thing that I find weird about this set. And just like I said, this speeder build just doesn't look right compared to the rest of the ship. I, I like the amount of detail that they put into the outer look at, of this set right here, but the speeder, I think that they could have probably done a little bit more with that. Like I said, this set just really needs an update sometime in the near future, but placing that right back into here can see that you have your minifigure of Count Dooku staring out into space and then you can also place this down like such which I think is very interesting that you can place it in like that so then you have your minifigure's head still poking out from the darkness so then it's sort of like a windshield going on right there but I don't like how that is it's just weird and also if you do move the ship all of a sudden the character might fall out but I think that this is actually strong enough to keep him in unless you are really like fiercely going on with it and then like I said we get a lot of different types of hinge and clip pieces right here just to show all of these different areas that can poke out of the set which I think is very interesting that they do give you all of these different types of parts that come out so if you do want to you can place it like this can have it looking like that and then that's how the ship should look. Very interesting look to the ship from the side and also from the other side. You can see that it sort of looks the same on each side. It's meant to look the same somewhat but that's really how the ship is supposed to look. It's, it's just a weird ship. That's really all that I gotta say there. Then of course you do get Count Dooku's hairpiece and then the two Magna Guards right here 
just for extra protection. And that's pretty much all that I gotta say for this set. Otherwise, leave your thoughts down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this set. Do you like it? Do you not like it? I'm sort of in the middle when it comes to this set. I like it because it's a Clone Wars era set, but I think that the build could be better. Like I said, we just really need them to make a new one of this set, but though that'll probably cost a little bit more than a lot of people would probably be asking to buy this set for, but I'm not really complaining. It's just another Clone Wars era set to add to my display. Also, remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon to know every time I upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now, and I will see you next time. Bye!